Father, we thank you for gathering us, and we thank you for your providence this day, the safety you've given us as we've traveled here. And Lord, we ask that you would guide all the discussion and uh, the information that's about to be shared. We ask that you would help us to... What's <coughs> this? Bless you. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, how many of you here haven't heard me talk about this before? Anybody hasn't heard it? We've got too many. Well, anyhow, what's going on here? The Supreme Court in 1992 handed down a 6-3 decision on a challenge to people being indicted without a presentment of a grand jury. And Justice Scalia made it clear that the common law grand jury is the fourth branch of government of the people, not connected with the other three branches, controlled or, or, or uh, hindered in any way by the other three branches. This is the people themselves. And we have the duty to know the Constitution and to use it to hold them within the confines that we set forth. They are our servant, they're not our master. We're the master. We need to act like it. But what's going on here, this John Darish from, uh, started out as NewYorkCommitteeMen.org and now it's NationalLibertyAlliance.org. John has done tremendous study and work in bringing this about in New York. And then he got a lot of interest from other states. So they decided to go national with this. And I'm glad they did because now we're afforded the opportunity, if we'll just take the time to go on the internet and sign in under nationallibertyalliance.org, sign in as a grand juror, and then let's get these elections held in the counties. Now, Butler County being one, Allegheny another, the, of people here, if somebody's here from other counties, I would hope that you would do the same thing. If you feel that you're a leader, you have leadership skills, sign in as a coordinator for your county and work to get uh, everybody in the county to know about it in other townships. Seek out other people in those townships and get them on board so that you can get the advertising done, you can get the election done, and you can, you can then have people elected as common law grand jurors. This is the mechanism where you can do something about abusive government. Nice, nice. We, know, we know that government is overextending its powers, it's usurping its powers, it's doing whatever basically it wants to do, and, and they could care less about the Constitution. They could care less really about even the statutes that they write, because they think it doesn't apply to them. They think it only applies to us. So they'll use it against us. Well, when we are injured by these kind of things, we're always looking, what, what can we do about this? You know, there's no checks and balances. The reason there's no checks and balances is because we do nothing. Good men do nothing. That's what's wrong. But if we step up to the plate and do this, we control them. This is our check. We can, we can bring criminal charges against them. Someone, anybody, can come to the common law grand jury and file a complaint, including any member of the grand jury, for any reason. <clears throat> there doesn't have to be a specific proof of anything. Four of the jurors will investigate the complaint. And if they find sufficient cause, they will bring then back the information to the general uh, uh, body of the grand jury, the 25 members. And then um, they, they have power to subpoena people, records, papers, whatever, whatever they need. And you can issue a subpoena. You can get subpoenas from the court clerk in the, in the county. And you can fill out that subpoena subpoenaing anybody you want to that you think might have information or may have done something to appear before you. They don't even have the right to, a, to an attorney. I mean, they can have an attorney come there and sit there, but he don't, he don't have any part of this. But you are, they are compelled at that point, if you're subpoenaed before the grand jury, you are compelled to answer questions and answer them truthfully then if they find sufficient cause, then they fill out a true bill and hand it to the sheriff. The sheriff goes out and makes the arrest and brings them under the due process of law. They get prosecuted. Here's your opportunity to do something about things you always wish you could. 
But if we sit by and we don't even bother to go on here and sign up, we're not going to do anything. We're just not going to do nothing. But I think you're here because of one reason or the other. You, you know there's something wrong. You want to do something about it. This is your opportunity to do it. So if you don't do it, you know what will happen. And when you have a problem, I get people call me every day. Bonnie will tell you. I get sometimes four or five calls a day. Sometimes my phone just hardly stops ringing. With people that's got problems. And they're looking for help. And I can't help everybody. It's impossible. I've got my life to live too. But I do try to help as many as I can. In any way that I can. But this is better. This is much better than what I do. I would give up everything I own if I could see this go into effect. I would give up everything and start all over. I would sacrifice it all because I love freedom. I hope that you care about your freedom and your family and your, your, your family's freedom, your friend's freedom, enough that you'll take the time to go on here and learn. Go on here, sign up, put your name on the line. Founding Fathers did. They not only put their name on the line, they put everything they had, including their lives on the line. For freedom, for freedom's sake. We're about to lose it. If we don't grab it right now and protect it, it's gone. I'll guarantee you within a year. Yesterday, or I'm sorry, Friday, I spoke to a group over in Philadelphia. On the way over and back, I was commenting on the way over on Interstate 80 how many cameras and stuff there are there. I mean, it's just amazing how many cameras there are focused right in on each lane. The big bars coming up over and everything, you know, and one after the other, like five miles apart. Why do they need so many cameras looking at us? And then the other cameras up on the poles, you know, the cameras that circle and all that, you know, picking things up, picking everything up. But here's a, here, you know, that's, that wasn't the worst thing that upset me. What upset me most was I'm seeing all these trucks from China, trucking companies delivering things on our highways in this country, Chinese trucking companies with Chinese driving them, English trucking companies with English people driving them. I mean, what do they look like? It's an English company. Guarantee you stop and ask the driver who he is. He's going to tell you he's an English driver. Here they are already in this country. Now in church Sunday, Pastor John will tell you, I, I, I asked for prayer for this country, for the common law grand jury, that it will be successful. The piano player stepped up and said about the foreign troops that are here to monitor all the special events like the Super Bowl and everything. Foreign troops in this land. Something wrong with that picture. How long do you think it's going to be before the foreign troops start rounding all of us up? before they start telling us what we'll do every minute of our life. That's what this is about. This is about stopping it right now. I hope you'll do it. I hope you'll get on that website and look for yourself. You hold the power. <coughs> Pennsylvania Constitution makes it clear. So does the Declaration of Independence. It says, Governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. We didn't consent to this kind of stuff. We never have. I never will. But yet it's happening. We are sitting by and letting it happen. We've got to do something about it if we want freedom. Pennsylvania Constitution says all power is inherent in the people. And all free governments are founded on their authority. For the advancement of these ends, they have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right to reform, alter, or abolish that government and to establish new government, laying the foundational principles most likely to achieve these ends. This is your power. You hold it. Use it or lose it. That's what's happening. With that, I'm going to end, but I hope you will go on here and read and, and learn. Look at the paperwork. Familiarize yourself with it. If you believe you have leadership skills, step up and take that role in your county or your township whatever it might be, and encourage your friends and other people around you, even people you don't know, I do it every day, to come on board. Do everything you can in the interest of freedom. That's what this is about. It isn't about me, it isn't about you. It's about us, all of us, and what's going on in this country. Today, we're not free to do much of anything, even speech. 
If you don't like something, you have the right to say so. But today we've got hate speech, don't we? They can charge you for hate with hate speech for anything they want to, whether it's hate speech or not. Supreme Court's made rulings, the precedent's there, but they don't care. And they'll run you through the courts, and you will give up most of the time because you can't afford an attorney, and you don't know how to do it yourself. Here's your mechanism to stop that. Here's your mechanism to stop them from coming and making you get a building permit to build a garage or add a room on or, or replace a window or a door. And if you think those, those rules are not in place already, think again. They are. They're in the Boca Code in your township, uh, and they have ordinances adopted by the township supervisors doing exact, uh, stating exactly what I just told you. They can't enforce it. It's an international code, the International Building Code. I've been involved with it for years, fighting it in my township. And I've told them point blank, you're not going to make me do it. I won't do it. I don't care what you say. I'm not going to do it. I don't care what a judge says. I still won't do it because he doesn't have that power. But I know how to do those things, and I know how to file the void judgments, and I know how to battle these people and make them prove their case. But do you? <laughs> Unless there's lawyers here, and I submit to you that most lawyers don't know it either. You know, I'm, Jim Barr saw me meet with two lawyers down in uh, North Hills uh, what, about two weeks ago. And these two lawyers don't know how to write cases or how to present a case in court or anything else. They're looking to me. I'm not a lawyer. I, I never went to law school. I studied law myself. But they're looking to me to teach them how to do their job. I'm not going to teach them how to do their job. I'll help you, but I'm not helping lawyers. But I'll leave it, I'll leave it there. I hope you have the courage to go on here and sign your name. I want to see Pennsylvania. I hope that I'll see Pennsylvania lit up the next time and Pennsylvania should be leading every state right now. We have enough people that have set their hand to the list that we should be leading that, that, uh, that number even ahead of New York and New York started this. We've got 12 counties with people signing up and we've got four more prospective ones. We are the Keystone State, right? Yeah. I mean, it started here. It started well, in Philadelphia. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's right. You know, freedom started there because the, the, the colonists had had enough. They were fed up with the, with the tyranny of government. We're in worse shape right now than the colonists were then. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A lot worse. I love this country, and I love freedom, and I won't give it up. Even if i got to fight it by myself, I still won't give it up. I hope you, I hope you love it the same way. Thank you. NationalLibertyAlliance.org? Yes. Okay. Yes. If anybody wasn't in here when mm -hmm. Dwayne talked, he's going to hook up something, a repeater system, that could get us the Internet clear so we don't keep losing it like that. It costs about $100. I left a basket there. Anybody that can chip basket in whatever. That's for the, ha for the house. That's for the, that's for the, the, that's for the Internet. And I'll, whatever we don't get, I'll cover the rest. But hopefully the next time we'll, we won't have these issues. But anybody that can help me with this project, I would really appreciate it. I hate to say it, but I sometimes, I mean, the meetings are great. And I thank all you guys for coming to the meetings. But other than that, I don't hear from anybody or see anybody, usually in between a couple times, and maybe an occasional person calls me. But, I mean, I, I'm trying to get this project going. I'd like to see some more cooperation and people at least coming out and, you know, make a bet. You know, if, if you guys are... If you don't you, you even come out and stay here, you know, I'll let people stay here for free. I told people that, you know, just to get the hang of coming here and, and, and getting the, and get, just to get the idea of supporting the greening house concept. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually willing to pay people with the currency that, you know, that I have that, you know, and most of you know about the tally stick system I got going on. I'll actually pay so give you give you a share of stock just for coming out here and spending a night. Just let me talk to you for a couple hours and try to encourage you to understand the concept and get involved. Because to me, I think well everything that's happening. And if you don't study the Bible, a lot of people don't. And this is what I want to one of the next few meet sometime either next month or the month after that. I want to have some information on basically uh, more on Revelations 
and where we're at in Revelations, because there's a lot happening. I think the mark of the beast is is right at our doorstep, and we're going to have to make some tough choices in the future. And it might not be more than a year or two down the road, or three, you know, who or knows maybe exactly, months. but maybe months, right? And and if if we are prepared to start trading amongst ourselves, you know, without taking this chip, you want to, you know, it's going to be a hard choice for people to say, oh well. What, you know, God didn't give me a choice. I got to take His chip. You know, uh, how uh -huh. else am I going to eat? You know, it, there's going to be, you know, if it just comes, if things start falling apart fast, and we go into martial law, I guarantee they're going to start pushing this computer ID and the chip on everybody. You They'll know. probably line everyone up and say, "Hey, yeah, your your debt will be scrubbed if you put this in you." Right. But but yeah. But whatever the case, if you don't take it, then you you're out of their system. That means no buying gas, that means no internet, that means no... So, that's going to be a tough battle, you know, but I think if enough people, or if they know enough people are serious enough that they're not, that they're going to refuse this, like people are refusing the vaccines, only hopefully a lot, a lot more adamant about it, maybe they won't push it, you know, and, and just try to get the people that are willingly do it, because there's a lot of people that will have already said that they, they have no problem with that being chipped. You know, and that's Is it, isn't scary. the chip considered the mark of the beast, possibly? Yeah, I would say. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't want to play with it, that's but, for sure. But anyway, I'd like to get an, somebody that's, that's more knowledgeable than me. I've, I've read Revelations for 30 years, and I do know quite a bit more than the average person. Pastor John. But Pastor John, and yeah, there's several people that, you know, that and, uh, maybe we can get a documentary, but we, should, we need to start preparing, and that's the whole idea of this greenhouse concept, and, you know, trying to get people to prepare and start trading, and and working together, you know, just like our forefathers did when they landed on this land, you know, they they had nothing but their hands and some tools, and they survived. And so, if we think we can't well, they survive had knowledge without too. The, yeah, they had knowledge, right? And that's the thing. We have all the tools, and we have, you know, a lot more than they did in a lot of ways. But if we're not organized and not prepared to help each other to survive, well, we'll hang separate. Yeah, we'll hang separately. If we don't hang together, we'll hang separately. And that's that's a fact. So that's just something to consider. So, like I said, anybody that can help in any way to get, like, I, hardly anybody stays here. So I don't get any donations from the uh, from people staying here. I had one guest in the last three months. I mean, that's that's pretty bad, you know. And. Uh, so if anybody knows anybody, I'm thinking about renting a room or two out to college kids. And so anybody knows if somebody's going to Slippery Rock or you know, would consider staying here instead of renting a... Do you have uh, a website, Mike? I, I did. I don't know if it's up anymore. Uh, Tom was running that, and I think, I don't know, I'll have to get back with him and see what's going on. I, I think one thing that would help, you know, is, and I think people are, you know, like the idea, but I think, I know for me personally, and many others are like this too, but sometimes people need some very specific points, well, like an action plan, like this is what you can do today, or this week, or this month, to move this game forward. Amen. Because it all sounds great, but it's like, but I know with me, it's like, and, and I'm sure others are too, well, yeah, but, you know, I, I, you know, where do I start? You know, it's like the old comment about, you know, uh, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah, right. Well, we, what we, what we could, what we need, what I need, is, is well, what's the, what's the next bite we got to take? Right. I think if, if you put something like that together on paper, and maybe email it to Gary, uh, and then get, and then he can forward it to everybody. I think that would help out a lot. Where do we start? Today. I think the first thing we need to do is get, you know, the people that aren't educated. I watch, I don't watch TV anymore. I watch documentaries. Even on the way to work, like I told some people, I got my little seven inch DVD player. I watch documentary, I have it on my seat wall instead of listening to the radio. So I'm constantly listening to hundreds, of, and there's so many good documentaries out there that explain so many things. The last one I just got was. Uh, it's called the Nazi Bankers, and I asked Gary to bring 20 copies. If yeah, I don't know if he did or not, but uh, I'll tell you what: if once you some of these documentaries, they really make you angry, and, and I think that's the kind of thing we, you got to know what's going on, and, and to get mad enough to really dedicate yourself to trying to fight this. You know, we got to get that American fight back, and you know, and and, and fight for our liberty. We, well, we, if we just and I agree, education, and, and you know, definitely getting the word out about what's really going on is important. I, well, my question was more directed to, you know, like, what do people that come to these meetings on a regular basis, what 
can we do to start, you know, putting this into a more cohesive group, you know, starting today? I mean, obviously, it's all up to us to, you know, work in our circles of influence about, you know, getting the, you know, getting DVDs out, talking about this stuff, and just challenging people. But blogs, Facebook. Sorry for okay. interrupting. Well, I'm, I'm going to pass the book around, and anybody that watched a good documentary. I want you to add it to this book tonight. We're going to try to get a list of, the, of maybe the 20 or 30 really good documentaries, that, you know, kind of eye-openers, and then we'll put that all on one list, because most of them are on YouTube, you know, and so you don't actually have to have a DVD player. So let's start with that tonight. Uh, you know, the one I just seen is Scotts Banker one. There's a website called Ja, J-A-H Truth, and they have... I just started into it a couple of days ago, and there's a lot of knowledge just in that one website. But I'm sure there's many, you know, and that's what. So I'll pass the book around, and anybody that knows a good website, you know, or, or some good documentaries, just put it down on the list. I just picked up one at Freedom Palooza, and it's called Sir No Sir. And it's about uh, the active soldiers in Vietnam and the fight against the Soviet Union. So I'll pass the book around. Right. And, and I just saw the correlation between the military today and how they're waking up. And eventually it's going to get to the point where they're like, no. Yeah, they ain't going to do it. You're right. <coughs> there, there's so many suicides. These kids today are supported by a civilian. Right. Well, that's like off, good. off base, they had right. uh, like coffee houses set up and stuff for the, <coughs> to wake up. For them to gather and they came up with their own free press. Right. Well, the, the military is beginning to realize, you know, a lot of the truth, you know, because there are a lot of good leaders in these, in the, you know, the, a lot of the books and the websites, these generals and, you know, they, they're fed up with the fact that they're being manipulated by the powers that be, you know, the money masters, so to speak. By the way, that's a great documentary yeah, to start yes, with, awesome. the money masters. It gives you a good background of the, of the last two or three hundred years, but to, to and, and then I think to go from the year 2000 on, that one I just seen, the Nazi bankers, I forget that that's the whole name of it, but it's on that jaw truth, and it shows you how corrupt, you know, it really is. It gets into stuff like how the OSS was actually turned into the CIA when they were flew, you know, flown over here in Operation Paperclip, you know, so, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. how our government now is basically the same fascists. They, they, they controlled Hitler, and Hitler was just a pawn in their game, too. So the Nazis know. won. So the Nazis won, absolutely. And Christian America and Christian Germany lost. World War II was not won by us. You know, the, the, the fascists are in control, and they, they're pulling all the strings. And until people wake up... How about the Great Calling? Yeah, that's exactly it. The Great Calling... That's what another good DVD. What in the world are they spraying? What in the world are they spraying? What about After the Tribulation by Steven Anderson? Never seen it. It's Oh, that's a, I, I, it's, I, it's a good one. Yeah. We, and, we, and, you, and, you can, he, and that guy, he's also, he's a pastor, Steven Anderson. He preaches a lot of good sermons. You can find it on YouTube. Just think you just look up Steven Anderson. Or S. Anderson, one of the two. I think, I don't know, he has, I don't know the numbers at the end of the... YouTube thing. My brother watches a lot of his videos and he's found a lot more truth about the stuff in the Bible because like some people don't study the Bible enough to know certain things. Right. You could just think a certain verse means something. You have to really study it to get it. Right. That's what that jaw truth is. Yeah. A lot of stuff in the Bible and relating I, our history. You know. they, they get back to something that he addressed here. Uh, I think what he's really talking about as far as this project here, the Greening House project, is interfacing with the people that we have congregating here mm -hmm. and it, it getting um, an administrative level going so that you can coordinate with right. one another. I'm I mean, bad at it. Now, I'll admit it. I'm yeah. bad at it. A couple of things that, um, you know, like I brought up before, any kind of group that has a start, starts having failing problems, it's always command control communications, you know, somewhere in that criteria. Um, I mean, really what you need to do is find a way to interface with individuals. Um, I mean, like for, you know, Guardian Patriots, we use Facebook, we use email, you know, I have a mailing list. Um, you know, and you don't have, you really have to do a whole lot with that. Um, I'm hoping my son-in-law here kind of helps me out. With, he's a good communications guy with the internet and everything. And so I, I, yeah. I would go one step further on that. Um, you know, and <laughs> and even, even chiming in with people on via phone. Well, that's what know, that's what I mentioned because the thing is, uh, you know, emails. People can see an email and delete it. 
you know, oh, even if it's something that is of interest to them, if they don't want to be bothered with you, they can just you know, get rid of it. And you know, and the, th and, and the one thing I have a, an issue with with a lot of the social media is, and that's, I think it's a trap that a lot of us fall into, or many of us, is it's easy to think that we're doing something just because we're posting things on Facebook. Yeah. Or we're yeah. sending things out on, our, on an email distribution list. That's one piece of it, but I can tell you, if, if, if that's where, where you're primarily operating to try to fight this battle, if you, uh, if it's if not going to work. Engaging with them in a more... Right, you've got to be willing to talk to people. You've got to be willing to say, look, this is what we need to do today or this week, you know, to get this, you know, this... This one-on-one yeah, -on -one communication. Yeah, this thing moving forward. One of the things that um, I've done in the past, um, one is like for the Iowa Defense Force, what we do is anytime we get somebody that fills out an application on our website, I go and I call them via phone, and I say, hey, you know, because some people are a little nervous, you know, whenever they're looking into joining a group, you know, especially a group of that nature. Um, so you call them up via phone, you know, and introduce yourself to them. You make that first step to break the ice with them and say, hey, you know, this is who we are, you know, and talk to them. I mean, I usually spend about 45 minutes to an hour with every person that I talk to that fills out that application. Um, the other thing that we've done that I see, I think adds to that cohesion like you're talking about is doing conference calls. Is, you know, just a quick conference call, you know, and, and say to everybody, okay, hey, you know, we're having a conference call. This way you don't have to drive out anywhere. You can just get on the phone call real quick and we can go through administrative affairs for our next meeting and address things, you know, that way we're a little bit more up to speed, you know, on what we need to do on the administrative task for a meeting. Yeah, and hold people and hold people accountable, too. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and again, you know, with conference calls, because I'm involved with the Constitution Party, and I can tell you that even with conference calls, a lot of times it's just hard getting people just to make the commitment to be on, on them. So that's why you got to you really have to buttonhole people individually and say, hey, I'm going I'm to be doing X, Y, and Z, between now and say two weeks from now, I need help with this. When can you, you know? When can we get together and do something? Just, if we don't start upping our level of intentionality now, you know, we're going to be forced to do it when it hits the fan, and yeah, you know, it's not going to be a pretty sight. If, if all of a sudden we got to start really learning how to work together as a team, you know, when you know there's not going to be any margin for error. But well, you're talking about there. I mean, that's that comes down to having people that are good at leadership and mitigation, um, and like you said, you know, holding people accountable. I mean, as far as you know, your, your CCC, that's control. Um, you know, you got somebody that's not doing what they should be on a leadership level or on their commitment level. You fall back to control. You lost control of that individual, and they're not they're not reliable. And you tell them, okay, well, there's left field. You know, you can watch left field for us, but obviously, you know, we can't count on you for A and B and C. Right. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that are involved with it. But yeah, you know, I mean, if, if anybody that, you know, like, wants to try to, you know, I don't know, your son, if you want to work with me, I can give you some ideas, some pointers on getting things kind of moving here, because I think that this, you know, this is rock solid, considering that this has always been most of the now, you know, and... Considering, you know, word of mouth that it's doing this good all this time, you know, we've already got a good foundation. It's just a matter of just doing some administrative practices to get it really well and get some stuff on the communication that, you know, I'm pretty experienced with that stuff, so I can give any kind of good if anybody's interested. There's a notebook. Anybody wants to write any websites in there with their name and address if it's not already in there? Bella scribbled over the last few minutes. But, uh, anyway, if you have any ideas, documentaries, anything, just write her down. And uh, that's a start, yeah. you know. And then we'll get something, hopefully, printed up, make copies at the next, and have it passed out at the next meeting. And uh, that's one thing you do. I mean, just getting people to just sign up. Yeah. You well, that's just uh, it, and I, you know, I don't, I don't have a pen. Anybody have a pen on? Right here. Okay. Next year. Yeah, we get people to sign up. You know, and see all we have.